One of the things you have to be aware of when you're mixing color is the density of each pigment. Some colors are more transparent. Some have more of a dense composition of, of color and, and texture. And so when you're mixing your own colors, you have to be aware of the ratios and which colors need you need to use more of because the pigment is weaker than the colors that you're mixing it with. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I have my 11 colors here. And by taking a little bit and pulling each color out, you're going to see the level of transparency or opacity that each pigment has. This is Hansa Yellow Light, and you can see that there's a certain transparent quality to it, which makes it great for making very, very light aquas or very, very light grays because it gives kind of a luminosity to the color. But you have to use a whole lot more of this color when you're mixing a clear, let's say a clear green with the cobalt blue because the cobalt blue is a much denser pigment. So we'll get there. So now we're going to look at cadmium yellow medium. Pulling this out, you can see that there's a lot more density to the pigment than in the Hansa yellow light. So you're going to want to use less of this in ratio to other colors than you are the Hansa yellow light. Same with cadmium orange. In cadmium orange, cadmiums are very dense. So you can tell, you can even see through my pulling it out that there's more texture, there's more density and opacity in the color than in the Hansa yellow here, which I can move much more uh, smoothly. It's more kind of a silky quality to it. This is quinacridone red, which is more transparent, but it's a very intense pigment. So it, it kind of crosses both lines in that it's more transparent and it's a great glazing color, but it's an intense color. So you do have to watch how much you use that in, in ratio with other colors. This is alizarin crimson, and you can see how transparent this is, and it's quite beautiful. And so again, it's also a very rich, dense color, but it's transparent, so it works very well for glazing on top of other colors. This is the dioxazine purple, and while there's a transparent quality to it, it's not quite as dense as the cadmium, the, the richness, the density of the color is so strong that it overpowers a lot of other colors. And so you have to use less of this in ratio to other colors. This is cobalt blue. This is a denser pigment. So when you mix this with a more transparent color, you want to use a little bit less of this than the transparent color so that the two balance out with each other. This is manganese, and this is probably the weakest pigment of all. You can see what a gorgeous color it is when I pull it out. But when you mix it with white, you use a lot more of this than you would, let's say, cobalt teal, which is a cobalt and therefore a denser pigment. But they each have their role, and it's very difficult to make this color. It's impossible to make this color. This is Viridian. And so Viridian is a little weaker because it is more transparent. Uh, it, work, it pairs very well with quinacridone red or alizarin crimson because they're about the same in terms of their transparency, but um, density of color. And then this is Prussian blue, which has more density in its composition, and it's equal to its density and strength of color to the dioxazine purple. So when you mix those two together, you're on your way to mixing a gorgeous black made out of colors as opposed to black that is a straight black out of a tube.